Welcome to the Borderless Podcast, your guide to traveling, investing, and living beyond borders, where we talk about living the life that you want to live where you want to live it. From beautiful San Miguel de Allende, smack in the middle of Mexico. With your hosts, Jonathan Lockwood and James Guzman. Welcome to the Borderless Podcast, traveling, investing, and living beyond borders. This is one of those podcasts where people who like location-independent businesses like to tell you how they did it and like to find other people who did it. They also like to help you live more internationally, have more self-reliance. And uh, so my name is Jonathan Lockwood. I'm here with James Guzman. Hey, James, how you doing? I'm doing uh, very well today. How about yourself? Well, 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 I'm getting ready for my trip to L.A. I'm going to go see oh, yeah. my daughter. Yeah. Um, but uh, the weather's fantastic here right now. Absolutely. This yeah. is the part of the Borderless podcast where we talk about the weather. <laughs> And it's getting more and more exciting in the borderless compound these days. There are all sorts of events going on, (laughs) almost daily. Um, And also here in San Miguel de Allende, Mexico, from Mm -hmm. whence this podcast originates. In fact, we're getting more and more into festival season. There is, yeah. We got uh, the the Sabores Festival coming up, Mm -hmm. which uh, all the different restaurants from town, they come and they set up in the park. And they give away samples of food and drink. They have It's just great. They have bands that play for a whole weekend. So that's a lot of fun. And then that same weekend is uh, Dia de los Locos, which is kind of a cultural festival where the the uh, the, the locals uh, get dressed up in all these different uh, costumes, and they just shut down the street and jump around all day and throw candy, and it's a lot of fun. It's kind of like the condescending group. I think they're <laughs> going to be a part of that, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Right. So yeah, looking forward to uh, festival season here in Mexico. Yeah, and I'll be taking pictures of that stuff too oh, and probably yeah. posting them on the blog. Excellent. For That'd be great. Yep. Okay, so our guest today on the Borderless Podcast is Chris, don't call me Christopher, Morgan. Um, mm. And Chris Morgan began his career in Canada, eventually becoming district sales manager for Bell Canada Yellow Pages. He then brought his expertise to Caribbean Publishing Company in Grand Cayman, later being promoted to director of di- digital media. Today, he's global business development man- manager of Cayman Enterprise City, which we're going to talk about. Chris provides a wide range of business relocation services to international companies who are establishing active businesses in the Cayman Islands, working with a large network of international professionals from the legal, accounting, and financial sectors to assist clients in their offshore corporate structuring. Welcome, Chris Morgan. Hey, good afternoon, guys. How are you? Excellent. So why don't we start off, Chris, by you telling us what is the Cayman Enterprise City exactly? Well, Jonathan, Cayman Enterprise City is a special economic zone uh, that is located in the Cayman Islands. Um, We have been in operation since 2012, and we basically are facilitating um, and relocating companies who are looking at taking advantage of a jurisdiction like the Cayman Islands. As you know, many people have you know sort of seen the the movies and and that sort of thing about Cayman, and I think that there's you know a little bit of uh, misinterpretation uh, in the in the marketplace about what Cayman really is. And you know, essentially, we we provide the opportunity really for the first time for international businesses to actually set up a physical presence, a real business in the Cayman Islands. And I mean, that's ultimately, you know, what uh, what I work on each day is to work with international companies who are looking at, uh, you know, whether they're, uh, you know, in India, Japan, in the U.S., Canada, or uh, Europe, and who are looking at, you know, a, a, looking at sort of the overall picture of their business. And as you know, many companies today. Are, are very technology focused and with our with our you know model is that if you could do your business anywhere and all you really need is you know a, a reliable infrastructure i e communications you know banking that sort of thing uh, we actually fit that bill very nicely and we are the only special economic zone of its kind in the western hemisphere so it makes us a very unique value proposition for international businesses who are looking at taking advantage of a structure like ours. Okay. An economic zone, free economic zone. So you say you're the only one in the Western Hemisphere. How does this compare? How many of them are there in the world, Chris? 
There's about 3,000 special economic zones in about 120 different countries around the world. And I mean, it's not a new model. Uh, it's not a new model at all, Jonathan. This has been something that's been around for many, many years. Uh, typically, the structure is it's uh, manufacturing base, uh, special economic zones. Mm. So the model is you know, you import raw materials into a jurisdiction, uh, you hire local labor to manufacture and, you know, assemble the final finished product, and then everything is uh, for re-export. So it provides jobs for the local economy, investment, that sort of thing. Now, I, I don't know if you've looked on the map, but we are a very small little, almost a speck in the middle of the Western uh, Caribbean Sea. And, um, you know, with our model, we're really a knowledge-based special economic zone that really facilitates technology companies or those companies who rely on human capital and knowledge to run their businesses versus, you know, heavy machinery, factories, that sort of thing. Because quite honestly, I mean, Cayman's a very small jurisdiction. We have a population of about 58,000. Uh, we don't have the labor pool nor the infrastructure to support large manufacturing companies. But for companies, uh, you know, who, as I said earlier, could operate anywhere in the world, we offer a number of unique opportunities to those companies. And I, I you know, when I first um, uh, saw, you know, the uh, the borderless site and and looking at sort of, you know, the, the the type of content and the sort of things that you guys are focusing on, I thought that this would be a very, you know, uh, interesting conversation to have with your listeners. Because, uh, you know, again, if you're looking for sort of that borderless community, um, I think a lot of people would be very surprised that there is a, um, a special economic zone like ours um, in the Western Hemisphere. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, with being one hour away from Miami and, you know, with uh, being on Eastern time, you know, six months out of the year and one hour out like we are right now. Um, but it's a very unique business model for companies and entrepreneurs who are looking at, uh, you know, uh, getting out of, you know, perhaps a very high tax, heavy regulatory environment and establishing their business in a zero tax and I, what I like to call a light touch regulatory environment. Okay, well, yeah, that sounds good. Now, yeah, I think that a majority of the people that will probably be listening to this, uh, the audience that we have at the Borderless Podcast would be people that maybe uh, small to medium sized businesses uh, maybe solo entrepreneurs, people that, uh, you know, just kind of uh, uh, contracting or something like that. For someone in that type of situation, uh, what are the specific benefits that they would get out of setting up a, a company with the uh, uh, Cayman Enterprise City? Well, the, the, the first thing that you have to understand about our model is that we are a, a privately owned company, uh, but our partner is the Cayman Islands government. Okay, so we entered into an agreement with the Cayman Islands government. It is a it was a fifty year agreement uh, that basically provided a number of very significant concessions to companies who are setting up in the zone. So this again is uh, extended out until two thousand sixty one, which is a considerable amount of time for a uh, business and, uh, you know, sort of a business life cycle. So the types of concessions that are guaranteed by law in the Cayman Islands through Cayman Enterprise City are 100% exemption from tax. So we do not, the Cayman Islands uh, does not have direct taxation, okay? Mm. Uh, we're a, actually a consumption tax-based uh, model. That's the way government generates funds to run the government. But in Cayman Enterprise City, you know, there's no corporate tax, there's no sales tax, there's no income tax, there's, we have a, a, a very uh, significant duty exemption. So for technology companies who are looking at uh, importing, you know, computers, uh, servers, kit to their, to their business, um, there's actually a duty waiver that we provide. Um, you have 100% foreign ownership is is allowed. Now we do, um, you know, we we provide a facility that you can also bring in the people that you want when you want. 
Um, we certainly encourage companies who are relocating to the Cayman Islands to look at local labor um, as, as an option. But if you have key people in an organization and you need to have them here to run your international business, we facilitate all that. Mm. And again, those concessions are guaranteed by law until 2061. And, you know, our setup makes it really for the first time very easy and straightforward to establish your international company in the Cayman Islands. Uh, typically from first engagement to, um, you know, the, the first employee at the, at, you know, sitting at a desk, uh, that entire process for a well-organized company is between three and four weeks. Now, typically someone who's looking at relocating, you know, sort of their lives, their business, um, that, that process is going to take a considerable uh, longer period of time to do, and it can be extremely costly. But our services are included in our overall fee structure. And um, just to give you a sense, I mean, to, to take advantage of our product offer, I mean, our entry-level product starts at U.S. $18,500. And that provides you the trade and business license to operate your company. That provides you um, one zone employment certificate or work permit. Uh, some of your listeners may be familiar with that term. Um, it provides you all the access to the concessions, and it actually provides you the space in which your company will operate. And that goes from you know reception service, mail service, uh, to you know right down to the desk, the phones, the printers, the copiers, even the coffee. So um, you know it's it's a very uh, it's a very interesting business model, uh, you know, and and structure. Again, given our proximity. And the jurisdictional benefits of having your business based in the Cayman Islands. Okay. Well, wh why don't we try to make this real for someone? For instance, uh, yeah. this is a person who is, maybe he's a programmer. He does, yep. you know, serious web architecture. He works alone. He has a computer. So if he goes this route for $18,500, he gets an office within one of your buildings, the Cayman Enterprise correct. City, Correct. Correct. And that office is approximately how big, for instance? Well, it, in that particular product, um, it's really, this is an open plan product. So it's a very, you know, I, I, I wish we could see the visual on it. It's very Google-ish in style. Uh, open plan, bench seating, uh, very modern looking. And uh, again, that would be the spot that they would come into. And, you know, it's, it's basically, uh, you come in, you sit down down at uh, the, the next available, uh, you know, sort of uh, workstation and you start to work. At the next available workstation. Oh, I yeah. see. I see. Okay. Yeah. Like, the, again, we have, we have places for everyone, but, it, you know, it's just, it's not a dedicated, I you see. know, office or desk. Of course, we have, you know, our products range from that very entry level coworker presence mm -hmm. right up to, you know, if you need a 10,000 square foot uh, office space, uh, you know, with boardrooms, offices, open plan, kitchen, that sort of thing. We provide those services as well. And we also secure the requisite work permits for your employees. Okay. So let's go back to our example again of this, uh, this sure. web architect. You know, he's uh, 30 years old. He pays his $18,500. Yeah. And among the other legal things that you help him establish... He's going to, obviously, he's going to get an apartment. He's going to get some sort of home there in Cayman. And I imagine yep. you do have relocation yep. services, so you're able to help them make decisions like that, point them in some good directions, correct? Absolutely. We help with every facet of the relocation. So that includes, you know, uh, where you're going to live. We introduce you to, you know, the appropriate real estate people. Um, we have relationships with, let's say, the law firm firms who will set up the actual company. Uh, we have relationships with the banks here, so helping you, uh, you know, really set up your bank accounts. Everything that you will need to, you know, uh, not only just relocate your business, but, you know, for many people out there, you know, you've got your personal side, you, you know, you've got family, you've got children. We, we work with you through the entire process. And, with our team here, with the amount of experience, I've been on the island for almost 13 years, and I'd probably be the newbie. And uh, so there's, there's so much knowledge. And, uh, you know, I don't know if, I, if you've ever lived in a small town, but, you know, everybody seems to know 
who the right people are uh, are to go to, you know, um, and we try to point our clients to the right people the first time, so they get what they need every time. Okay, great. So he's got a place to live. You've you've helped him establish that, and then. He can choose to come into work in this, as you say, sort of Google-ish environment where there are workstations where he can sit down and he can set up his, uh, and what, what's it like there? What, what does he have access to? As I said, I mean, it, you know, included within our product is your internet service. Um, you know, there, in, in all of our facilities, there's sort of, you know, we have the, the split between these open plan co-worker presence, we call them, to, you know, dedicated offices. And, you know, we, we configure these offices um, in different ways. But, you know, what you find is when you come into any of our buildings, it's quite a hive of activity where you've got, you know, somebody who's in the internet and technology business, as you've outlined, you know, and they're in the lunchroom. And the next thing you know, they're talking to someone who's in a commodity related business or who's in the biotech sector, Mm. because we cover a number of different sectors within CEC. Um, And if, if I could, I'll just outline them. So we have our internet and technology park. We've got our um, commodity and derivatives park. We've actually just added our Cayman Maritime Services Park, which uh, maybe we can go into a little more detail in a moment. But we have our media park and um, our science and technology park. So we've got a real you know, varied set of verticals that we have selected as far as the types of companies that we can, you know, that we can bring into the zone. Because again, it's it's our remit is 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 wide, but we're very specific as to the types of companies that we're really looking at bringing into CEC because again, we're looking for those technology driven types of companies. That sounds like a really good uh, environment, and I'm sure that the people that you meet uh, would really, you know, spark creativity and that kind of thing. Um, I, I have a, a question about the length of time. Uh, so, you know, if, if you have a business there, what uh, I think you, I guess you have different types of visa restrictions or, or something like that. What uh, amount of time do you have to be on the island? Well, we don't have uh, a minimum amount of time that uh, that someone needs to be on island if they're you know if they're a director or an employee of a CEC company. Obviously, we do you know we we require them to be uh, you know to have residence here, so you know an apartment, some sort of uh, you know a place where they live. Uh, but you know, a lot of companies these days, um, you know, especially startups, uh, are you know they need to be where they need to be. And, you know, so there's a lot of travel involved. So there's no minimum requirements. Mm. But our, um, our zone employment certificates, work permits um, are five years in duration, okay? And, um, you know, that gives people quite a, quite a sense of comfort because typically, you know, when you're looking at moving around internationally, they're, you know, one to two year permits. They can be very lengthy as far as actually securing the work permit. And we actually, you know, with uh, with our, our program, um, you know, providing that, you know, and again for your listeners, it's uh, just a clean bill of health, clean medical, and can speak. Uh, you know, we do have a requirement that you can speak basic English. Those are the three boxes that we need to tick for an employee to be able to relocate to the Cayman Islands. And you know, um, I, I'm, I I know James and I had a little side conversation about uh, you know some issues he had with another jurisdiction on just you know work permits and arrivals and you know just issues uh, and being resident. And I mean, we have stripped that out. We have made it very very straightforward for an international company who fits within our remit to relocate, you know, themselves and their employees uh, to a jurisdiction like the Cayman Islands. What is the national language of the Grand, of Cayman? It's English. It is. It's a yeah. We're a British overseas territory, so we have a governor, and we still have that linkage to uh, to the UK. All right, excellent. So we're talking with Chris Morgan of Cayman Enterprise City, a special economic zone. It is a way that you can. I, when we say no taxes, usually when people say no tax, you say yeah. You mean no income tax? No, no. Here, there's no income tax. There's no corporate tax. There's no sales tax. There's no payroll tax, no capital gains tax. And that is something that 
Uh, this jurisdiction has guaranteed until 2061, which is quite a while. So this is yeah. something that's very attractive to a lot of people. So, uh, you know, other than this, um, I mean, that sounds great. Uh, like I said, I think people could be very creative there, and I'm sure that they would make some very good contacts. Uh, away from these parks, how is uh, life around the area there in, in the Grand Cayman Islands? Well, I think that that's one of the big selling features of the Cayman Islands. I mean, I'll talk from personal experience. I mean, we moved uh, down here in 2003. Um, you know, I had not visited the jurisdiction prior to that. But when you come down, I mean, you know, we, we rank usually in the top three uh, dive destinations in the world. Um, you've got a melting pot of about 122 different nationalities in the uh, Cayman Islands. And um, again, I mean, you know, you've got the beautiful Caribbean Sea. You've got uh, some of the uh, well, I would say probably the nicest beaches in the Caribbean. And you've got this infrastructure um, and this this jurisdiction that, you know, you have, um, you know, first world uh, medical, shopping, uh, grocery stores. And, you know, for anybody who have lived in the islands, I mean, sometimes, you know, things aren't quite what you remember from, you know, if you were from the States or I'm originally from Canada, you know, as far as going to the grocery store and, you know, getting the sort of things that you want. But um, because of the mix um, of different nationalities here, it's it really is a very multicultural um, experience. And the Caymanian people, um, I would have to say, are probably some of the most welcoming people that I've ever met internationally. And I've traveled extensively. And I'm not just talking about the Caribbean. I'm talking about the world. Um, you know, and for individuals with uh, families and children, um, we've got a phenomenal private school system here. Um, you know, we've got a great educational system here. And, you know, as I said, it's very first world. So, you know, people, when they get here, they're, they're actually very surprised um, at how developed uh, this island is. And, um, you know, just the, the, you know, the, the level of sophistication. Because you have to re remember, we're the sixth largest financial services center in the world, okay? You know, this is after New York, London, Tokyo, and there's little uh, Cayman Islands in sixth position. Mm. Uh, we have most of the uh, leading international law firms are based here. All of the big four accounting firms are here. And we actually have over 600 banks here. So, you know, even though we have a lot of jurisdictional benefits through, you know, tax, uh, those companies, if they could, if they didn't have, you know, proper internet, uh, you know, proper infrastructure, roads, all that sort of thing, um, they wouldn't be able to s sustain their businesses here. Uh, but it is here, and it's, it's quite a unique uh, country, um, you know, not only in the Caribbean, but in the world. Yeah. That, I mean, that just sounds phenomenal to me. You know, I love the Caribbean beaches, and uh, I'm sure there's lots of international people, and then to work in a Google-type environment, I mean, all that sounds great. Um, I would, you know, think that kind of the only uh, drawback is that it's not going to be as inexpensive as living in other places like, you know, for instance, where I live here in San Miguel de Allende. Uh, I mean, maybe we can address that a little bit, uh, you know, as far mm -hmm. as as far as the pricing goes. I mean, uh, that uh, what what can you, you say about that? Well, you know, it really depends on where you come from because, mm -hmm. believe it or not, we actually have a number of our clients who've relocated from, you know, places like London, England, uh, Geneva, uh, markets like that where it is significantly more expensive. I think, you know, uh, James, it comes down to, you know, what, we're, what are you talking about? You know, if you're talking about cost of living, yes, you know, I, I, would, I would put it on par with, you know, uh, living in a major U.S. metropolitan city. And I'm talking in the downtown core. Mm. Um, you know, uh, some things are less expensive. Uh, some things are more expensive. Um, but I think that, you know, certainly, you know, when – if you're coming from – you know, I'll just give my personal experience. Experience when you're coming from a jurisdiction where, you know, you could be making a six-figure salary, but uh, you know, forty to fifty percent of that salary is being, um, you know, uh, extracted in tax, uh, and then you know, you come to a, a jurisdiction like Cayman, and let's say it's even, you know, fifteen to twenty percent more expensive to live here. Mm -hmm. 
Um, the fact that you know you're offsetting that by a tax uh, by having no direct taxation, um, you actually are further ahead uh, by by you know living here, and certainly from a company standpoint. Um, you know, that's where it becomes quite an interesting value proposition. Uh, you know, when you start zeroing out things like, you know, corporate tax, capital gains tax, payroll taxes, that sort of thing. Yeah. So, um, although I would say, you know, the cost of living, you know, would probably be a little bit more than where you are right now. Um, you know, I sure if there's direct taxation uh, for you where you're located, but certainly, uh, you know, any of your listeners who are in, you know, onshore in the U.S., Canada, the U.K., I mean, anywhere where you're in a, you know, a significant tax jurisdiction, um, you know, you could actually become much further ahead by relocating to an island like the Cayman Islands and, you know, not being in that sort of regime. Yeah. Well, I'd much rather live in a place like if it, all things were equal i'd much rather live in uh cayman islands than say like manhattan or london or something me personally i mean that just sounds yeah, like fantastic <laughs> weather no yeah. tax right and um so and no snow did i mention no. that there's no snow <laughs> right. yeah um so let's give one example i mean d- definitely if somebody was going to take advantage of this they need to uh set up a, a residence so how much would just a, a standard apartment cost around that area well, you know what? I mean, you know, I'll just put it in U.S. terms. You'd probably, for a standard apartment, you're probably looking at fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars, and that would be for okay. per month, and that mm-hmm. would be for a two to three bedroom. Um, it's not going to put you on, you know, Seven Mile Beach, which is one of our, you know, more prominent locations for people who are looking at living on the beach. But, you know, I mean, you know, certainly even, you know, we've, I've got clients who are, you know, they're spending, you know, $1,000 a month U.S., 1200 It really depends on the individual. You know, if you want the, the gold-plated knobs and, you know, the view, you're going to pay a little bit more. But, um, you know, we, we have a very diverse population here. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, there is, you know, uh, uh, from the very high to, you know, low wage earners and they're able to secure and live and, and, and make this jurisdiction work for them. Um, you know, I think that everybody can adapt accordingly. And I mean, we do have our own versions of sort of, you know, the, the, the Walmarts and the, um, you know, some of those big box stores, uh, in, in the U S like, uh, you know, um, what is it cost you less? Is, is, is that uh, – what Costco? is the uh, – Costco. Costco. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. We have our versions of that. And, uh, you know, it, again, I mean, they're always – that's been a relatively new phenomenon. But, uh, again, I think that, um, you know, it, it, you, you could make this jurisdiction work. No question about it. All right. We're talking with Chris Morgan, Global Business Development Manager of Cayman Enterprise City. This uh, organization helps international companies to set up business with a physical presence in Cayman. And there are a lot of good things to that in Cayman. No taxes, lifestyle benefits, and no taxes. James, anything else? Well, I mean, it sounds like a really good option. You know, if anybody's in any of these um, industries, you know, I, I personally, I would I would check it out, you know, and see if this is, uh, uh, you know, something that might be good for you. I mean, living out there on a beautiful beach with this international community and all these people around you. I'm sure it would be a great environment. So uh, I'm going to include uh, some links in the show notes today at uh, borderlesspodcast.com. If people are interested, they'll be able to go there. And uh, we're going to continue to uh, talk to Chris and, and watch as this uh, develops here. Thank you, Chris Morgan, for joining us on the Borderless Podcast. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. I enjoyed this a lot. All right, we're going to take a moment to give some attention to our sponsor. Today's Borderless Podcast is brought to you by The Condescending Group, your online leader in promoting unwarranted self-confidence. Early next month, The Condescending Group is releasing a new video course called The Piggish White Heterosexual Male. It's based upon the teaching of Professor Noel Ignatiev, who, although a white man, has for years been promoting the complete and total annihilation of the white race. Of course, they're running into a bit of trouble since, well... Most of them are, in fact, white. But as our friends at the condescending group like to say, there's always a loophole for the moral elite. The course will include such speeches as, but since some black men like white women, we can leave some of them alive. Also, white males are disgusting, but not if they're gay. And why this doesn't apply to us and our friends. 
There will be a live studio audience, and afterward, white males who are not close personal friends of the condescending group will be given the option of pistol, knife, or rope to off themselves. Get your tickets today. The condescending group, they care more than you, even about proper genocide. Uh, it was nice to have Chris Morgan. You know, I wanted, I wanted to mention this. You, you, you mentioned earlier, James, that somebody you were talking to, this was somebody who was helping you with some WordPress. You considered maybe hiring him. And he's based in Phoenix, right? And when he saw the site, the borderless site, you know, he was like, wow, I want to do it. What was he saying? <laughs> yeah, well, basically, I, I, you know, I paid for the service and because uh, I'm, I'm presently, I mean, I'm racking my brain trying to, you know, work on this, uh, not just the, the borderless blog and borderless podcast um websites but also some other things and so i'm looking for some wordpress help and so i paid for this service and i'm talking to this guy he just happened to be the one that was assigned to me and uh it t- turned out that that service is not, not what i needed it was more basic but uh all of a sudden he looks at the website and he says wow this is great man you know I, I lived in spain for a few years after college and you know i i thought it was great but uh, you know I've got this, you know, I work on computers and I'd love to be able to go, you know, I know I see some friends that live in Panama City and stuff and I really love to do that, man. I'm going to follow this and you've really given me a lot of inspiration just looking at your website to go do it myself. So, <laughs> And you funny. saw earlier this week on Facebook, recently anyway, uh, a friend of mine, this is an old friend of mine from the advertising community in Michigan. He posted on, or he tagged me, it says, I swear... If they make me pick Clinton 2.0 or Bush 3.0, I'm moving next door to Jonathan Lockwood. Viva Mexico. <laughs> and of course, the, the, so the motivations probably of this young man you're talking about and my friend are very different. Mm. And yet it's the same thing. A lot of people would appear to be interested in this idea. Those living in the United States, and I hate to uh, leave our European friends and other friends in other parts of the world out of this, but a lot of people are looking to relocate out of the United States, or it sounds like a magnificent idea to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. yeah, absolutely. And there's lots of uh, you know different reasons for that, but uh, you know why not have the options open? You know, there's only over 200 countries throughout the world, and uh, I've always thought there was kind of a a strange idea to just restrict you know, your mentality to only, to only one country. You right. Know, so. Grow where you're planted. I heard yeah. a, a supposedly <laughs> wide, wise old man say to a, a, a congregation of cult members, <laughs> grow where you're planted, brothers and sisters. That's what he said. And I remember thinking, hmm, is there some wisdom to that? I don't yeah. get it. Uh, but, you know, I, I commented on my friend Steve's uh, thing about, I, I, I can't take, you know, polit- for political reasons, he just can't stomach it, and so he talks mm-hmm. about leaving. Of course, every election cycle, somebody says that on one side right. or the other. But uh, I said to him, you know, for some, now might be a time to consider Henry David Thoreau's comment to Ralph Waldo Emerson when Thoreau was in jail for refusing to pay a tax. Emerson visited Thoreau in jail and was said to have asked, Henry, what are you doing in there? And Thoreau replied, Waldo, the question is, what are you doing out there? You know, so there are people for it. I can remember my Aunt Lucy, uh, one of the few family members that wasn't part of the big cult, you know, who talked to me about a year or so ago when I told her I was moving here. She went, but why? Why would you move to Mexico? And not everybody does that, but a lot of people do. And it's like, are you kidding me? If you don't have some idea about why, you probably don't. Don't have your mind awake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a clumsy way of putting it. Yeah. <laughs> but there are lots of reasons why people want... And if you don't want to move, fine. You stay there. Enjoy it. Really. I'm going to go visit my daughter in a couple of weeks, and I'm mm-hmm. going to enjoy my time in L.A. That's fine. But for people who want to, we hope to be able to provide you with information or inspiration mm-hmm. to help you look outside of those borders that you're already interested in looking outside of. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I'm... Um been thinking of all, all lots of different ways that I'm going to start putting out more information, uh, specific kind of uh, 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 just to the point information on you know how to how to do that different ways to make money in uh, overseas and uh, you know have bank accounts in different countries and um, residencies and all this type of stuff. So I'm I'm going to try to consolidate some of this information together. And uh, yeah, you know, I mean, I guess this is this is something that's on a lot of people's mind, a lot of people's mind, you know, as far as like getting out of the U.S. Um, and uh, then all these different, not you know, regulations as far as what they're doing to Americans. Since there's this big outpour of people, you know, with FACTA and FBAR and the rest of it, uh, you know, there's just a lot of people that just say, well, forget it. You know, I guess I'm just going to have to cut ties completely. 
and are just renouncing. You sure. Know? That's you know. one of those things. I mean, that, you know, it seems like every three months, every quarter, there's a stream of articles like this one I'm looking at right now. Record number of Americans give up citizenship. We're not urging you to give up your citizenship, folks, if you don't want to, but there must be some reason why it just keeps exploding. In fact, a record number of Americans, 1,337, relinquished their passports in the first three months of 2015. That, according to the U.S. government, and we know Mm -hmm. that those numbers are not always accurate, correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean... um Remember, we had uh, Glenn Roberts. Glenn Roberts on this show right here, and he said that he had never, he's never, it was it two years ago, and he's never yeah. been on any of those lists. Yeah. So. so, my God, it's probably a lot more. We keep hearing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Been getting in some good conversations with people. This idea, we had Glenn Roberts on quite early in the Borderless podcast, and, uh, you know, he's the stateless man. Right. And I found one other guy. He's another Facebook friend of mine. His name is Mike Gogolsky. They're kind mm-hmm. of famous. There's very few. Americans who are now completely stateless. In fact, another borderless podcast former guest, Pete Sisko, mm-hmm. was saying, oh, no, they don't let you become stateless. He, he was misinformed. I said, well, let's invite Glenn on to explain what happened. So uh, what Glenn is still waiting, though, for his international travel document right. that, according to UN member nation, according to the UN charter, if you want to travel and not stay within the confines of your country, you're, they're supposed to be able to provide you with it. But nobody's done this yet, apparently, in Paraguay, so they're still getting up and running. Do you know they... if the other the other, uh, the other guy has one? I think he does. In fact, I think he does I, as well. I think he posted a picture of it mm-hmm. not long ago. It yeah. just doesn't have any country on it, but it looks just like a passport. Yeah, and I guess the difference is, is that once you go there, uh, you have to you know you have to go through like the, the formal uh, process of getting a visa. Uh, rather than just walking in like the U.S. citizen, you could just walk in like Mexico, for example, right. and get a, a tourist visa. There you, you have to ahead of time uh, file for a visa and make sure you can get in because you're not represented by right. any, any country. Right. But so. the, the, the U.S. apparently will let you go. Yeah. You know, without, oh, well. that's, that's what he says. One of the few countries that will let you renounce without doing so. So how much was it? The, the, the cost to renounce went up dramatically in the yeah, last 2, year, Yeah, right? 2300 and something uh, Yeah, $2,350, dollars. but yeah. it used to just be like 400 bucks right. or something like that. Yeah, and I mean, they just, just arbitrarily, you know, uh, rose it, uh, you know, uh, to that. It was, to yeah. cover the necessary costs yeah. <laughs> to handle this, it went up that much, right? you know. And so who knows? I mean, they could just arbitrarily raise it uh, to, you know, $10,000 right. or right. whatever, you know. So I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, you know, I think I probably told you, James, I've got a, I've got a, uh, an appointment with somebody, sort of a, a renowned international sort of consultant on these matters mm-hmm. who's generally thought of as being very reliable. And uh, I'm really looking forward to this. At this time, I don't quite see the value in renouncing. And of course, I'm not prepared to because I don't have I, I, I'm going to want, you know, free travel and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I'm not in a position to do it. And right now, it doesn't look like there are extraordinary advantages. But I'm going to be interested in talking to him about helping build me a path towards something like that, mm. in addition to helping with me with my business and stuff. So Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I guess, you know, the first thing you'd have to do is get a, another passport right. first, right? Yeah, yeah so, exactly. Uh, so that, that, that's why I'm not in a position right now. Yeah. You know, my, as far as my heritage, you know, it's greatly English from mm. what I know. I have a great grandmother who was full German, but those countries don't have any program right. like this, do they? No. I no. didn't think so, right? No. So unless I find an Irish relative or something like that, you know, yeah. I'm not going to be able to explore that route. So as you put out in that video the other mm-hmm. day, there's really three ways. I mean, if you want to stay out of the gray market, or the, uh, obviously the black market ways of, of doing this and ending up getting screwed or possibly in jail later, you know, there's only so many options. One of them is the citizenship by investment, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, correct. And uh, yeah, the, probably the most uh, popular ones are uh, St. Kitts. And then Barbuda. And we've, mm-hmm. we've had uh, two or three people on uh, to talk about that. And I did that quick video. If anybody's interested, I did a video. It's only two minutes and 50 seconds. So, uh, you know, check that out on the YouTube channel. It's uh, how to get a second passport. Right. And, I mean, so you can either pay for it or you can make an investment. Mm-hmm. And if as long as you keep that investment so long... You can sell it later, but you're constantly warned, look, don't think you're going to be able to sell it very easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And, well... Yeah, uh, they have uh, real estate investment, and you know how it, in St. Kitts it's supposed to be a pretty uh, uh, you know straightforward pop process. Uh, okay. You know, you, you buy it, and then after uh, you know, I, I think you have to keep it for four years or something like that. I, I, uh, something I like that, four or yeah. five years, and then of course you can move to like our friend uh, David Singheiser, who I think is a regular listener of the yep. Borderless Podcast. Hey, David Singheiser, move to Paraguay where. 
Glenn Roberts is. And Mm -hmm. he was telling me this past week, he says, you know, three years, you know, uh, three years and uh, you you put yourself in line to go ahead and get, uh, get citizenship there. Yeah. And I think you can go to uh, Paraguay and uh, you can get um, permanent residency very quickly. That's one of the best uh, permanent residency programs there. uh, And so a lot of people do that. And unlike Cayman, uh, it is very inexpensive to live there mm-hmm. from what everyone has told me. It is very humid, kind of a deal mm-hmm. breaker for me. What do you know about Cayman? I mean, it's pretty humid well, there too, yeah, right? It's I mean, tropical. Yeah. But you're right. But of course, you're working right on the beach with those pleasant ocean breezes. Yeah. So it cuts into that a little bit. <laughs> yeah. What did you think about the Grand Cayman option, James? Uh, I, honestly, you know, if I uh, was making a, 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 you know, enough money that that made sense, you mm-hmm. know, as far as the, the tax uh, advantages, then I would definitely keep that as an option. You know, like I said, you know, that compared to living in like Manhattan or something, if, if the cost of living is the same and I'm saving on taxes, then that's great. I mean, I would love to live by the beach. It sounds like that what they have set up as far as this kind of Google type of mm-hmm. uh, environment, uh, you, you'd be able to, uh, I find that working in that type of environment makes me very kind of creative. Uh, you, you make contacts with other people that can really help you. And that, you know, having that network is very, very important. And, uh, yeah. you know, if you're right there by a beautiful beach and there's all these, you know, uh, international kind of expats and stuff coming in and, you know, uh, the, the locals are very nice. So I'm sure it's a great, uh, great lifestyle, you know? Yeah. You know, I mean, we talk a lot about some of these cities, Chiang Mai comes mm-hmm. up every week. Uh, and some of these other areas, we have some friends, uh, you know, put it, trying to put together a community down in, in Southern Chile and uh, all of these little zones. I mean, San Miguel is kind of sort of like that, too. Mm-hmm. Um, but here's another one. And this was kind of created by a private organization, as he put it, who has a rela- their client is the Cayman government. Mm-hmm. And so he did sort of paint a picture for me of how this works. I guess when I think of Cayman, I think of Mitt Romney. Mm-hmm. I think of enormous businesses. Yeah who have these little shell things set up there. That is not what he was describing to us today. No. You know, it sounds like one of these places where you can, you know, $18,500 for a desk, and it goes up from there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I mean, of course, you know, the living expenses. Right. That is one of those things. So there is a niche there. It does not require you to be a multimillionaire whatsoever for this to be a very excellent option. What you are are giving up as far as, you know, paying maybe a little more than you would in, in rent, you are also uh, you know, you're saving a hell of a lot in taxes. Yeah. And honestly, you know, he said fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars for a two to three bedroom. You know, you're not going to be directly on the beach, but somewhere close to the, a beautiful beach. I mean, that's right. That's true, not bad. True, you know? absolutely. I paid that in Southern California ten years ago. Yeah. You know, so. so it's something to. So I think it's something to check out. Okay, so we're very glad that Chris Morgan, Global Business Development Manager of Cayman Enterprise City, agreed to come on the Borderless Podcast today. He was a great guest, and he was very informative, and he's got a great product there. Cayman, helping international companies set up business with physical presence there, no taxes, and lifestyle benefits. So uh, thank you for joining us on the Borderless Podcast. Now, what we would like you to do, of course... Please, if you're enjoying this, and a lot of people weekly are sending us messages saying, hey, thank you so much for this podcast. Go to iTunes. You can also go to Stitcher, but go to iTunes and rate, review, and subscribe. That helps us in, in several ways, okay? And also go to borderlesspodcast.com. What do they get, James? You see a big button there that says Instant Access. And uh, what that'll do is that'll get, give you an ebook. And also get you a, a link to our private uh, Facebook group, which is the Borderless Network. And lots of people from all over the world on there. We have different conversations about all kinds of things. And uh, we're, I'm planning on expanding that a lot. And you also keep up to date on some other kind of uh, things that uh, you plan on doing uh, in the future. So, you know, keep up with us. And uh, we really like to just uh, have a, a network of people, you know, going out on your own when you're trying to start your own business, going to new countries and stuff like that. It's very important to to be in touch with other people that uh, that can help you do that. So that's what we're, we're trying to create here. I agree. And that seems to be how this is rolling out. It really yeah. is much less a political thing. I was telling my daughter the other night, mm-hmm. you know, it seems to be a little bit more the people attracted to the Borderless podcast are the sort of digital nomad set, mm-hmm. you know, which was a whole thing that did exist before, but was really popularized by Tim Ferriss. Yeah. And so many things have come out of that, but also mm-hmm. the, the sort of PT, permanent travel, right. traveler, a perpetual tourist. And I'm glad about that. I would yeah. much rather it be that than some sort of political thing. Sure. Another Borderless Podcast coming up soon. Thanks for joining us for the Borderless Podcast. Traveling, investing, and living beyond borders. <laughs>